It's early, but this is this is this is his best team. It is. It's his best team he's ever had. He's got all the pieces. Man, I cannot get enough of college football right now, and with all the hype and how the season has progressed thus far, the sky's the limit for Wolverine football. And despite a three-game suspension, in my belief, Jim Harbaugh will lead the Michigan Wolverines to a national college championship. Ugh, and as much as that hurts being a Michigan State grad, I bet my dad's smiling watching this video right now. But how can you not be excited? Michigan's playing good, and the Detroit Lions are playing good. Like, it's a great time to live in Michigan. And if you guys are excited as me, please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel because it does help me out. More people get to see this and we're almost at 3,000 subscribers so I'd greatly appreciate it. But going back to Michigan, they have not played their best football in the first three weeks of the season but what ultimately is getting me so jacked up is the way JJ McCarthy is playing right now and how the schedule is going to play out for them the rest of the season. It sure was a heart attack turnover frenzy game versus Bowling Green. McCarthy's already being compared to some of the best NFL quarterbacks like Joe Burrow and Aaron Rodgers and going back to last year, according to CFF, McCarthy is one of two quarterbacks since 2000 to throw for at least 2,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, and no more than five interceptions as a first-time starter. Behind Trevor Lawrence, who finished 38-2 as a college starter and won a national championship, and of course became the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft. And other than the three picks last week, and McCarthy is starting the 2023 campaign hot. And I was listening to Joe Klatt this morning, and he said that Michigan fans need to be concerned. J.J. McCarthy turns over the ball. But in my opinion, you have to be a gunslinger and take risks if you want to be able to, to achieve. And if Ann Arbor wants to win a championship, they have to let JJ be JJ. And guys, the dude is already currently on pace to break Michigan's all-time single-season touchdown passing record at 25. So far, he has a passer rating of 194, a completion percentage of 82.4, 701 passing yards, and 7 touchdowns to 3 interceptions. And because the offensive line play has been so good, and oh by the way, they've won the Joe more award two years in a row. His monster relationship with Cornelius Johnson and Roman Wilson continue to blow my mind each and every weekend with both their average receptions at 17. And golly, <laughs> Blake Quorum continues to put his dominance on show after an ACL tear. Like what more can you ask for than an elite offense being led by a Heisman contender? Like... <laughs> And truly because I have to say this, in part because of returning players and key additions that they made, this Michigan defense has been absolutely suffocating so far and probably is the best Jim Harbaugh has ever had under his tenure. And that's largely in part due to the defensive scheme in its third year brought over by Mike McDonald, whose defense really is based upon the premise of bending, not breaking. And it really seems over the last couple of years they have prioritized stopping big plays, which has allowed them to make tremendous team success. And like every Everybody knows here, and even though it's been three games, the Michigan defense has been the best in the nation statistically, and they also rank number one in scoring defense and only allowing 5.3 points per game. And they're the reason, despite the turnover problems, Bowling Green was only able to score six points. And let's be honest with ourselves, boys and girls, there is a lot of potential first round picks on this defense. With the defensive line possibly being more monstrous than it was in 2016, having superstar performances from Chris Jenkins and Mason Graham, who's now hurt, and also having guys like Kenneth Grant, Jalen Harrell, Braden McGregor, and Derek Moore. Yeah, they've been really destructive up front, rushing four guys, but the real test is going to be against Penn State to see where this true talent lies. But so far, they've been incredible. And where I really get fired up for me is the linebacking core and in the secondary with the transfer out of Nebraska, Ernest Hausman having the most potential. And as an inside linebacker, he has great sideline to sideline speed and playmaking ability that's just unbelievable. And let's not kid or stop ourselves short. Michigan has the best secondary in the nation. And in the next two years, do you not find yourselves thinking that Will Johnson will be a top five pick in the NFL? Like, does he not remind you guys of Patrick Sertain? And guys, what's the craziest part? He was a freshman last year and held the likes of Marvin Harrison and Quentin Johnson as a freshman. Rod Moore, who's battling injuries right now, is arguably a top three safety in the nation. And for me, what I really like about watching some of these guys like Rod Moore is when they have a chip on their shoulder. Like every freaking game, this guy comes in and just is a ball hawk, man. And as we've seen the last couple weeks, this defense has had struggles tackling. And probably the best leader on the defense, Mike Sanristil, is, I mean, what a story, man. 
man, the Nickelback converted wide receiver is surely playing himself towards the NFL. And even though there's no clear-cut second cornerback or possibly edge rushers on defense, last year the Wolverines had no star on the defense. This year, they may have 11 stars. And this brings me back all the way to the beginning of this video about Jim Harbaugh. I really, really, really like Harbaugh. And through Blake Quorum's press conference, you really feel that you would run through a brick wall. And boy, the level of respect that his players have given him throughout the three-game suspension has just been unbelievable. Like, the rapport that Harbaugh has formed with his players after all these years just truly shows the leader that he is. He's a player's coach and somebody I really want to win the whole damn thing just because he's a good guy, you know? And it would be a cool story for him to win the national championship and ride off into the NFL sunset. God, I wish we had some of that at Michigan State right now. Sean Lewis you coming over? And honestly, looking at the remainder of their schedule, they have the clearest path next to Georgia to make the playoffs. And I really think this is going to be the third year in a row that they beat Ohio State, and I absolutely love it. At number seven, Penn State's probably going to be the hardest test for them, but I honestly think they can pull it off and go undefeated this season. Harbaugh's on a revenge tour. And overall, I really don't feel like the conference has gotten any better this year, and I think Michigan's still going to be at the top. And honestly, with this year being the final year, the Big Ten will feature four teams in two divisions, it's probably the best chance they're going to have. And I really don't think Harbaugh is going to allow seven straight postseason losses. And I really hope for his sake in the program that they get their first bowl win since they beat Florida in the Citrus Bowl back in 2015. Since then, it's been an L to Florida State in 2016, an L to South Carolina in 2017, an L to Florida in 2018, Alabama in 2019, Georgia in 2021, and TCU in 2022. And for me, I think when they match up against anybody in the postseason, they can smack their butts off. USC, I'm not scared of. Texas is a little nervous. Georgia, I don't think they're on a three-peat, and I really think this is the year for Michigan. But I don't know, guys. This is just some knucklehead's opinion, but let me know down below what you think. Will Michigan go undefeated this season, and who are they most likely to face in the playoffs? And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.